All right, Clappy, let's look at the over rotators out there. Yeah. Now, certainly not as common as what we would see a very typical pattern of a player not rotating their lower body, yep. a lot of arm lift, and then the following errors that ensue from there. Let's talk about the players that might have a lot of flexibility or a lack of concept, and they're just trying to rip these hips open as much as they can. Yeah. And we see that in the golf swing, there was a certain sequence between the club, the arms, and the body. And we see a lot of players would actually start aggressively turning their hips before they've even started to move the club head, which needs to travel the furthest distance in the golf swing. And if we just rip the hips open, well now I'm all out of sequence and I've got to play catch up. Yeah. Right. What are your thoughts on that? And I see you've got a couple of discs there. So yeah, sequencing is obviously really, really important in the golf swing. And if the pelvis moves too early and you're not loading efficiently into the trail side, it encourages clubs to whip inside, hands to whip inside. Everyone always talks about their takeaway and you get a lot of people that say takeaway is not important. But for me, takeaway is really important in terms of starting a golf swing in the appropriate manner. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, some people can more than cope with a takeaway moving inside, no problem, such as, you know, Matt Fitzpatrick that does it mm -hmm. more noticeably nowadays. Sure. But I think there's a lot of moves that we can get recreational golfers to do which will far and wide better their golf rather than people saying that their takeaway doesn't matter. <laughs> correct, correct. So with sequencing and loading and learning how to load efficiently, I've got these couple of discs here mm -hmm. that we're gonna just gonna get Kara to stand on. This will test me. <sighs> they're, they're kind of wobble boards that are just blown up. <laughs> Now, from here, <laughs> um, the ability to just whip your hips open is oh. <laughs> gonna sacrifice your pivot and how you move there, right? Yeah. So if you can stay a lot more balanced on those, mm -hmm. and rotate through the golf swing, stay on there, good. Yeah. See how now your hips stay a lot more stable to start, and then from there you can wind up and rotate. Yeah, Good. and what I feel is it's almost like a chain reaction. I have to start it with the club head, yep. the arms, the torsos, using that as the engine for the backswing. And then the hips essentially begin rotating because I've maxed out my potential movement with the upper body, which then begins to naturally pull my lower body along for the ride, rather than going, let's slam this thing back and all yeah, of a sudden I'm- Absolutely, and the, and the order of sequence, if you can, Think of it of, of what travels the furthest yep. is kind of the order that it should move. So obviously the club head travels the furthest, so that should go first. So when you're setting up, club head goes, yep. club head goes, hands and arms and shoulders go, yep. then torso goes, yep. and then pelvis rotates last. Yep. If you just do a couple swings feeling that, that will also help with feel this, what we're trying to give you there on the golf ball. Correct, and just may quickly mention to when the club head's moving first, it's not that you are pulling the head back using the arms, it's actually encouraging it to feel with a little bit of wrist hinge here, right? Yeah. So from the address position, feeling that the wrist hinge is moving the head, and then feeling that the torso is then moving, I feel like I really have to keep this lower body a lot more passive and quiet. Absolutely. Then I would, if I know I was working with someone who was that big over rotator. Yeah, 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 for sure. And, and this just kind of not only sequences it better, but gets you understanding and learning how to load more efficiently and correctly, should we say, into that right side. So instead of just doing this and whipping that right hip back and getting no load down into the floor, yeah. we're feeling that right leg lengthening. If you stand on these here, you're almost feeling like that right leg kind of lengthens up mm -hmm. but i can feel a real big load down into the floor and i'm big not time. kind of just whipping it open because as soon as i whip that right hip back i lose all the balance and connections through that uh board there on the floor yeah and little disclaimer certainly does don't come down to the range bring a couple of discs and start hitting balls because no. you can see that even with um a lifetime playing golf between us it's still a challenging exercise at Absolutely. the best of times. But that is what is required to uh, breach into the boundaries of exaggeration to give you a completely different feel to yeah. what you used to. If it feels normal when you're exaggerating something, the likelihood is that you've not really done anything different, yeah. right? So, you know, these sort of things are really key and handy. I don't do them when you're hitting shots. They're more that, okay, you can get, you can stand on them, you can get your hands across your chest and you can really feel like in gyms and things like that, Building the load, see a lot building of pros awareness, doing this in gyms. building awareness for what's going on and how that load feels completely different and the connection down through the base of that foot. Mm. You see a lot of people that do try and rotate without keeping that connection through that right foot and you'll see a lot of people kind of do this. Yeah, correct. Okay. Whereas if we just get on these, you'll feel that you have to keep the connection down through that foot. This foot stays completely kind of flat and torqued into the ground because mm. then from there you're able to use the ground a lot more efficiently and 
get back to the ball a lot better, should we say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that, love that. So is there any then uh, progression drill that you have up your sleeve that players can use? Absolutely. A, if they don't have those, or yep. B, let's say they've done a bit of gym work, then they're at the range and they just can't get the feel before they're going to hit a golf ball. Yep. What do you recommend they do? Tap your toes up and down when you do a backswing. Love it. Simple love as that. It, it just it recreates this kind of feel to help load and solidify, should we say, up. The, the torque and your sequence in through backswing. Exactly, because as soon as you are cognizant of tapping your toes up yeah. and down, it's very hard to go, okay, let's rip this hip back yeah. because you're focusing on that movement, staying athletic and dynamic. That's why you see a lot of pros always in constant motion before Absolutely. they pull the trigger. Side note, also keeps you Flow relaxed, state. Yeah. athletic, which is great. So from here, toes tapping up and down, really feeling that the club head, then the torso, and then the hips are coming yeah. into play. And one last little point I'd like to touch on here is the awareness of what you said at the beginning of just knowing that the club head needs to travel further. Like 100%. We all intuitively know that, but sometimes just focusing club head, hands, chest, hips, rather than going, rip open those hips because I feel like I need to turn yeah. more. Yeah, and that also reduces turn, length of backswing. When you do that, you reduce speed. Yeah. When you reduce speed, obviously you don't hit it as far. Yeah. Right? Club head travels the furthest, get that moving. Okay, hands, shoulders, arms, they travel next, get them moving. Then the torso, then the pelvis. Mm. And if you do it in that sequence, the order then gets a lot easier and simplified when you try and hit shots. Okay, great, mate. So I'm gonna tap my toes a couple of times, bust out this little dance move, get the feeling that the upper body is rotating. Yeah, good. And by no hits. means we're not restricting any no, movements no, no, at no, all. No. This is for the player that definitely does over rotate the hips. Yeah, it's, it's also good for the one that needs to understand a little bit of sequencing as well. Yeah, correct. Perfect. All right, that feels really good. Let's see if I can get this sequencing down, Pat. Knock it to a foot. You know, that felt pretty damn smooth, mate. Best one there, mate. Love it. Cheers.